Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at a way to reduce blood glucose levels while sitting at your desk or in a meeting. Reducing blood sugar is important for diabetes, but even for non-diabetic people, it's still good to control the post-meal spike in glucose. We will go through this paper a potent physiological method to magnify and sustain soleus oxidative metabolism, improves glucose and lipid regulation. Quick summary first, and then we will go into more detail. The soleus is a muscle in the calf. It's not the large muscle at the back of the leg, which is the gastronemius, but is hidden underneath this. And we can see this in this cutout marked in red. This muscle has a number of special features, which make it very useful in reducing glucose in the blood. The first of these is that it uses minimal glycogen. In general, when our muscles are working, they will first consume glycogen, which is stored locally in the muscle, in preference to glucose. As the soleus does not use glycogen, it must pull glucose and lipids from the blood and uses much more of these than its size would imply. The second factor is that the muscle does not get tired easily. It's normally used for walking and maintaining posture while standing, activities that can be continued for hours rather than minutes, and so can continue to operate for a long time or many repetitions without becoming fatigued. These two factors mean that the muscle significantly reduces glucose and insulin after a meal and also improves the lipid metabolism. So why is this important? Many people spend a lot of time sitting, and during this time, they have a low metabolic rate which increases the risk of age-associated metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes. Even for people who are not pre-diabetic, high glucose spikes one or two hours after a meal have been shown to be a risk for Alzheimer's and other metabolic conditions. Glucose tolerance is quite difficult to improve by other therapies, including weight loss or exercise, and this simple procedure has a larger impact than other therapies. The exercise is called a soleus push-up and is done sitting down with the knee at right angles. The heel is raised off the floor, held for a second, and then lowered back to the floor. This is then repeated. So let's have a look at the study. There were 25 volunteers. The study used a randomized crossover design, so each person would be their own control. If they were exercising in the first cohort, they would be sedentary control in the second the recruitment aimed to have a wide variety of participants in terms of age, sex, BMI, and activity level. In the testing, the control sat for seven to eight hours, while the treatment group would not sit for more than four minutes without performing a soleus push-up, and accumulated 270 minutes each day. 270 minutes is four and a half hours, so a significant amount of time on the exercise. As mentioned, one of the reasons the soleus reduces blood glucose is that it does not use glycogen. Here we see the total amount of energy expended compared to the usage of glycogen. Although the effort takes very little effort, the measure of activity is only just above that of sitting. The oxygen burn is much higher. Here we can see the metabolic rate is much more than two times that of sitting. In this table, we are looking at glucose concentration in blood after a glucose challenge. Here are the times in minutes after the glucose intake for up to three hours. And the blood levels of glucose in exercise group one and sedentary controls and exercise group two. Note that in the study, they had two procedures, SPU1 and SPU2, where SPU2 required more effort, but I could not find out the details of what was the difference in the two procedures. In both cases, after 30 minutes, the blood glucose level is significantly lower in the exercise groups. I turn these numbers into graphs as it may be easier to see. The brown lines show the glucose level of the exercising group and the blues for the control. The peak is lower and so is the area under the curve, which represents the sum of the glucose concentrations over time. They also performed subgroup analysis by dividing the participants into halves based on sex, age, BMI, sitting time, steps per day, and fasting glucose to see if the benefits were dependent on any of these criteria. In all cases, we can see that the area under the curve was significantly negative for the exercise groups. Again, I put this into a graph and divided them into groups, which might make it easier to see 
Note that the graphs start at 35% lower, not at zero, so the differences are exaggerated. It would have been good to have more data on the required dose. 270 minutes is a long time to be doing the exercise, even if it's not much effort. It's not that the exercise can replace other more intense workouts, but it does offer a way to control glucose levels, especially when you're forced to sit for long periods of time. As mentioned, even if glucose tolerance is good, flattening the spike is still better. I've started doing the exercise, particularly after meals. My recent DNA test showed that I was prone to obesity, so it may be especially important for me. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you all soon. <laughs>